Good morning and welcome to Faith Community Church's podcast today. I'm Pastor Teresa doing the 5 4 and I'm going to continue our subject this week on surrender. My uh, scripture today is out of Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. What is surrender to us? It could be a variety of things. It could be surrendering to the enemy. It could be surrendering to a food that you've been trying not to eat. It can be surrendering to a sin that you're trying to not do anymore. But I wanted to talk to you today about surrendering to God. The definition of surrender is resistance to the enemy, submit to authority. Because when we were saved, we surrendered to God. We surrendered our wills, our souls, our minds, our bodies, our lives, everything. We gave it to God 100%. I've said this before that when we were saved, we got, you know, that day or maybe the next few days before we got really dabbling back into the worldly things, we had everything that we needed. And that told me I surrendered 100%. We're no longer our own person. After we get saved, we completely surrender 100% to God. We've been bought with a price. We've been adopted and grafted into His family of God. Therefore, we are out of our family, even though we're still in it. We're in the family of God. We are definitely children of God. I'm a child of God, and you are a child of God. We live our lives for Him. We do everything pleasing unto Him. So many times we try to do it within our own strength. And when we try to do it within our own strength, we find that we fail. Like the Israelites, they were stuck in the wilderness for 40 years because they couldn't see God's vision for their life. Do you give up today and surrender to the world? Or you surrender to your past because you can't see God's vision? He's not going to always show it to us. He's not going to always tell it to us. But we just got to trust and know that God has a vision for each one of our lives. And we have to constantly keep surrendering to Him. Surrendering over and over over to Him and being submissive to Him. God wanted them to see a new vision while they were in the wilderness. But they wanted to go back to where they came from. They complained to Moses. Hey, you know, you think this is good out here in the desert? We're miserable. We want to go back to where we come from. Well, God wanted them to go into the land of milk and honey. He had something new for them today. And we can apply this scripture to our lives today. He's got something new for us today too. We just got to keep surrendering unto him and not to our flesh. If you want to see change happen in your life, you got to get that vision and go beyond where you're at today, your circumstances or what you're feeling. I always talk about feelings and we cannot go on our feelings. I know feelings are fickle, you know, and that we can be swayed by opinions or something we might see on the radio or the TV. We have got to be rooted and grounded in God. So surrendered people obey God even when it doesn't even make sense. Does the world make sense to you today? It sure don't to me. But God's got a plan for each one of our lives and he is in control of it even though it don't look like look like it or it makes sense today. He's in control, y'all. Abraham followed God even though he didn't know where it was taking him. Mary accepted that she was going to have a baby even though she'd never been with a man, but she knew that God was making a miracle within her. Joseph trusted God's plan without even knowing why he found himself in such difficult circumstances. But just know where you're at today. I'm where God wants me to be. Each one of these people we read about in the Bible surrendered to God, submitted to God, and the end result of their surrender was a victorious fulfillment of God's promises in their life. If you give up, you'll never get God's promises in your life. Hang in there. Stick to it. We must learn to encourage ourselves in the Word. We are not going to get it from nobody outside of our body, but Jesus Christ is going to encourage us and show us how to encourage ourselves in the Word of God. That's what David did in Psalm 27, 13, 14. Even in the midst of his troubles, he said, 
I remain confident of this. I will see goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Well, how do we wait? We wait by being steadfast, unmovable, praying, being still and being quiet. That's how we wait for the Lord. I was saying this morning that we live in such a noisy world and we cannot hear what God is saying to us because so much junk going on around us. We have to get down, be still and be quiet in order to hear God today and wait for him to move in our lives and don't pick it up yourself and do it yourself. Let God do it. Our hope should not be based on what we can see or what we can hear today or even what we did in the past. Rather, it should be based on the Word of God and His promises for our lives today. Isaiah 43, 18, 19. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. We see a lot of new things around the world today. We see negative and we see positive. But what God's telling us today that He's doing a new thing in our life, He's doing a new thing in our life. He's doing it by inspiring us to read the Word of God. He's inspiring us to to follow His plan. He is inspiring us to wait on that vision that He has for our lives. He has nothing but good things for us today. Give everything to God today, whether it's your past regrets, your present problems, your future ambitions, your fears, your dreams, your weaknesses, your habits, and your hurts, or your hang-ups. Allow Jesus to take control of your lives today. Surrender Him and He will take control of your lives. When you're surrendered to Christ, you can handle anything that life throws at you. If you think you feel like you're not handling it well, that's when you need to go back to the cross. Kneel at the foot of Jesus today and that's where you can handle anything that this life throws at you. God is always doing something new. Use the spiritual discernment that God sent the Holy Spirit back here to us so that we'll have knowledge, wisdom, and discernment through the Holy Spirit to follow His plan for your life. Stop following your own thoughts and your feelings. They will get you in trouble. Glance at the circumstance, but spend more time focusing on Jesus then focus it on your problems and yourself today. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. Let's pray. God, I thank you that you're in control of my life, and I thank you that you are the author, you are the finisher, you are the beginning, and you are the finisher of my life. I thank you, God, that you are in control of my life because I sure can't do it myself. I just pray out there today that if anyone don't know you, that this Jesus I'm talking about that can handle all our problems, that can uh, lead us, that can give us new things, that can guide and control each one of our lives, that they will accept you as their personal Savior, that you are their Father, and that we are children of God whenever we accept you. I just pray for uh, everyone today that uh, whether they're sick or the ones that's lost loved ones in their life, that you'll comfort them and that you'll strengthen them today. We pray that they all have a blessed day in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and I'll see you till next time. Bye.